Hi everybody, I'm Dan Wells. I write horror, fantasy, and science fiction, and I talk about games on the internet. Today, we are going to talk about different kinds of monsters, okay? Uh, this is not a game review. This is one of my kind of GM tip videos uh, where I want to talk about different kinds of monsters. And uh, specifically, you know, like most game masters in the world, uh, uh, most of what I run these days is D&D &D because it is the most popular game in history, hands down. D&D uh, &D 5th edition. And what I have started to notice as I play my own games, as I run games for other people, as I watch other people running games, is that because of the sheer variety of monsters in Dungeons and Dragons because of the way that the monsters are presented to you it becomes very common for people to use the monsters pretty much for combat scenarios you get into a fight and then you you know you know that your characters need to fight something this week and so you think well what are we gonna do and you look through D&D Beyond or Roll20 or your actual physical books you know however it is that you do it and you think, well, they're level four, and so uh, then there's five of them, so they have this much XP, and I can build encounters, you know, with this budget of, you know, doing all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then we tend to think of the monsters as being there purely for combat. And this, to be fair, is not a problem exclusive to D&D. &D. And now I'm calling it a problem and we'll get to that in a minute. There's absolutely nothing wrong with throwing your characters into fights. That's why a lot of people play uh, role-playing games, and, and particularly Dungeons and & Dragons. But there are other ways to use monsters, and that's what we're going to be talking about. Every game system out there has lots of different kinds of monsters, and we tend to think of them as being there for combat. Uh, social things are for when you're dealing with, you know, people, and then it's time to fight, so we're going to fight, you know, maybe some people or maybe some monsters or whatever. Anyway, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, in particular with witches, which is why I've got this picture up here. Um, and this, of course, is the witch from the Disney Snow White. And with the exception of a fairly one-sided ch chase scene at the end of the movie, she never is in, in, she doesn't do fight scenes, right? And I think it's very telling that when the party of seven dwarves, most of whom were probably fighters, when they encounter this witch, she may be appropriate to their level in terms of challenge rating, but she is not a threat at all. Um, she, uh, you know, they chase her up a mountain, and she tries to knock a stone down on them, and then she, you know, they get rid of her, and she falls off, and the end, right? The actual physical confrontation, she's a pushover. But the thing about witches is that I think that their primary value as monsters lies outside of combat. And I think this is true of a lot of different kinds of monsters in a lot of different kind of game systems. Uh, so let's take a look at, um, we're going to look right here at, uh, this is D&D Beyond, and I've just searched for hag. So here's all the different kinds of hags, okay? Um, so now, for example, let's, uh, let's show this. I want to look at the, uh, the night hag, okay? The night hag is a hag that gives you nightmares. It is challenge rating five, which means that, uh, you know, you need to, uh, you, bleh, if you play D&D, you know how the, the encounter balance system works. Uh, if you have D&D Beyond, you can just build encounters of appropriate level. Uh, but like if you threw a challenge five creature at very low level characters, it might just eat them for lunch. Uh, if you throw it at characters of very high level, they might eat it for lunch. Uh, and so that's what the challenge rating system is for. But... Look at this. Yes, it has armor class of 17, 112 hit points. So it will take a party 
a few rounds maybe to chew through all of those hit points. Meanwhile, you know, let's say that this combat lasts three rounds, which for some level five characters I think is generous. They could probably kill this night hag quicker than three rounds, which means she's going to get three actions. And they are claws, and once per day she can do a nightmare haunting. She also has some spells she can cast, so, you know, maybe she gets off uh, a ray of enfeeblement, maybe she sleeps somebody, and then she gives them a haunting. Uh, okay? And then they kill her. The end. But you've got to look at s some of the other possibilities here. First of all, she has this chain shape spell, so she can shape shift. So they might not even know that they're dealing with a witch. You've got etherealness, where she can come and go as a ghost. She can turn basically from a ghost into a person and back and forth. And then, um, you know, she, you take those together and don't think of a witch as a combatant. She's not a physical threat. Her goal is not to show up and try to cast as many spells before they eat through her hit points and overcome her resistances and kill her. That is the most boring way to use a witch. What you're really going to try to do is rely on this chain shape so that they don't know she's there. Rely on this etherealness so that she can get in and out of wherever you need her to go. And then, once per day, she nails people with this nightmare haunting. And what this does is uh, it basically reduces your hit points. It makes it so uh, you're... You, it's, it's basically a curse. It's a slow curse that will kill you over time and give you horrible nightmares throughout the process. That is so much more interesting than let's have these people kill a hag. And eventually, of course, they're going to catch and kill the hag. But before that, you have a lot of opportunity to throw these different kinds of challenges at them. And so while they're trying to do something else, while they're trying to, you know clear out maybe not a dungeon but they're in a city or they're in uh you know a castle and then they keep waking up with nightmares and then over time they realize well my long rests are not doing anything my hit point maximum is getting reduced every time and suddenly this hag can be a huge threat because you're using it more subtly now this is fairly obvious information right um Compare this to the uh, Dusk Hag from Eberron, which is essentially the same thing. It wants to put you to sleep and then give you nightmares, but it's kind of designed to be more of a combat threat. It's designed to be able to do all of that nightmare stuff during combat. So it gets to cast the sleep spell with 98, uh, you know, which is potentially, what, uh, 9 times 4... 36, 40 hit points worth of something that it can put to sleep. And then it's able to zap you with these things. Um, it is able to uh, heal itself when you wake up with this Dream Eater ability. Um, has a lot of, you know, it, it gets two Nightmare Touch attacks instead of one because they're trying to make that Nightmare Witch into a combat threat instead of an out-of-combat threat. Uh, they're basically the same idea other than that. Um, but, like I said, this, this is not a revolutionary idea. Um, we know that different kinds of monsters can pose a different kind of threat outside of combat. And so what I want you to do as game masters, as storytellers, is to find those creatures, find ways to do horrible things to your players that are not just fight scenes. Um, Dungeons and Dragons is, yes, one of the major offenders in this area. Not because the game itself is bad. I love the game and I play it all the time. Uh, but because of the way that it is designed, it kind of is very easy to think about it as, you know, here's the social part of the adventure, Here's the exploration part of the adventure, and then here's the fight. And, 
you know, we, you have the opportunity to use these monsters for so many things other than just combat. Anytime a monster can turn itself invisible, can shape change, can, um, you know, cast these kinds of spells, let it be in the background. Let it do its thing. Let it be subtle and frightening and threatening long before they get into a room with it. Because the simple truth is that by the time your characters get into a room with pretty much anything, they will be able to kill it. And so don't think of the monsters purely as, you know, experience points or as uh, fight scenes. Find ways to make them threatening outside of combat. And, uh, you know, the, the hags, the witches are such a good example of this, but uh, there are plenty of others too. So anyway, very short video today, uh, just something I've been thinking a lot about lately um, is, uh, you know, the way that we use these monsters. So anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you have enjoyed it, and I hope that you uh, find some opportunities to do horrible things to the players in your games. Anyway, I'm Dan Wells, and you are awesome.